Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, December 6th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Some mobile keyboards have long been in the crosshairs of privacy advocates just because they essentially collect all the data you type. One example is AI type. AI type uh, claims to use artificial intelligence, as the name implies, in order to create a better typing experience. Now, apparently, in the AI type case, some of the data collected ended up in an unsecured MongoDB database. This uh, was found by Chrome Tech Security Center, which then notified AI type and AI type and then promptly secured secured the database. No telling if anybody else uh, got the data. According to AI type, the data did not include any keyboards or such, but as they describe it, mostly statistical behavior information about user use patterns of the keyboard. They also state that only about half of the data that they had available was exposed. Now, spoofing the from header in an email is probably one of the oldest tricks out there, but it has gotten a little bit more difficult lately with spam filters and such, obeying things like DKIM, DMARC, SPF, all these good standards. Now, in order to be able to still make the user believe that an email came from a certain from address, there is a fairly common trick and that involves UTF encoding the from address. Now, if you UTF encode the from address, then essentially you're sort of uh, using a base64 encoded UTF-8 string. It does bypass many of the spam filters and depending on the main mail client is still displayed as the fake from address. Now, while this is not terribly difficult to pull off, uh, there are variations in different mail readers, how they are displaying these types of from addresses. So to make these sort of tests easier to conduct, there is a new tool now called Mailsploit. Mailsploit has a list of 33 different email clients that then can be used to craft particular messages with specific from addresses to users of these mail clients. Pretty neat tool and probably also a good kind of trick to show off at security awareness events. And apparently there is a new piece of ransomware out there that is again going after network storage devices. The first one like this that I remember was CineLocker. CineLocker specifically went after Synology devices using a specific web application vulnerability in these devices. This new version does use Samba Cry, the Samba vulnerability that can be used to execute code on Linux Samba systems. So a wider range of devices is possibly vulnerable here as long as port 445 and Samba is exposed to the world. The problem, of course, uh, with uh, this type of ransomware is that these devices are often used for your backups, so you may end up with encrypted backups. CineLocker back in the day, and I think it was about two years ago or so, was actually not a big success for the person that wrote it. They sort of in the end gave up and tried to sell the entire inventory of encryption keys. Not sure if they actually ever got a taker for it. And Google released December patch for Android. So if you do have in particular a Google device like a Nexus or Pixel, you should be able to apply these updates. Probably the most prominent flaw being fixed here is the Wi-Fi crack vulnerability. I believe there have been prior patches for this. Not sure if this is of an additional improvement on these patches or if it just patches a different set of of vulnerabilities that were released with crack. But probably at least as interesting are yet more vulnerabilities in the media framework. That has probably been sort of the largest problem in the past few years with Android. 
Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.